Welcome to this video presentation on discrete systems. In this presentation we're going to take a look at the discrete system that we have here which is fairly complicated. Um, it's complicated really by this additional feedback path is what it's referred to. So the output is being fed back into the system so it's been added together with some of the these branches, these three branches which are feed forward paths so the, the, the output has been fed into the system again so this is a, a new thing for you to see. Um, so we'll just uh, run through this system and what we want to do is be able to determine the output of the system for this sequence of numbers and if we can work it out for this sequence of numbers we can really uh, work it out for any sequence of numbers okay so this is our input sequence of numbers which we'll label x of n the usual convention and the output sequence of numbers will be y of n um, so let's just make a start and deal with any issues as they arise so the first input is going to be a value of 2 so that value of 2 will be Placed on our system. Uh, the 2 will be multiplied by 2 here, give me 4. Grant. Now um, we have explicitly defined 4 values of x of n, and, um, but sh you should be aware that uh, there are actually previous values of x of n. There, there, there are values of zeros becoming an infinite value of zeros becoming before x of n and also an infinite number of zeros becoming after x of n. While they're not explicitly defined, they, they are there. Um, so that would mean that on the previous uh, branches you would expect to find values of 0. So I'd expect to see a value of 0 there and another value of 0 there. Okay, um, so the 4 is basically going to be added with lots of zeros. There's also z we don't, the previous output we assume is 0. So our first output is going to be this value of 4 and we can store that out here so that's our first output now let's clear all that and we will just record the result of 4 and let's go to our next input which is this value of 4 that value of 4 is put there uh, the delay operator caused the previous value that was on this branch to now appear on this branch which is a value of 2 and we have a zero down here, so the zero will be multiplied by minus two will be zero. Now this is where it gets interesting. This is where the feedback comes into it now. Now the previous output, previous output, the previous value that was on this branch up here, will now appear here because of the delay operator. So it's the very same as the feedback path, or sorry, the feed forward. It works in the same way. The 4 will be multiplied by 0 0.5 or halved, so that a 2 will appear here. Um, the 4 here will be multiplied by 2, so we'll have an 8 here. So now I've these values to be added together. 8 plus 2 is, is 10, and 2 is 12. So my next output is 12. Let's clear those and just record the result in yellow. And let's move on to the next input, which is a value of 8. So 8 will be pushed onto my system. Um, the 8 will be multiplied by 2 to give me 16 here. Uh, now on this branch, this middle branch, uh, we'll have the previous value that was up here, which was a value of 4, so that'll appear there. Uh, and on this branch, this bottom branch, well, well, whatever was here on the previous iteration will now appear here, and that was a value of 2. So going into the adder will be a value of minus 4 because of this multiplier here. And the previous output was a value of 12, so that 12 would appear here, which would be multiplied by 0 0.5 or halved to give me a value of 6. So um, 6 and uh, minus 4 and 4 uh, will be, well that will give me 22. So my next output will be 22. Okay. So let's just clear all that and record the result in yellow. Um, 22 and we move on to the next input, which will be a value of, of 6. So I'm hoping you're getting the hang of the feedback path. Uh, let's put our 6 onto the system anyway. And the previous output, of course, uh, sorry, the previous value on this branch was 8. So that will appear on this middle branch now. And the um, previous value on this middle branch was 4, so that will appear here. The Let's just uh, put the minus 2 by 4. Calculate that, that will be minus 8. Um, and the 6 by 2 will be uh, 12. Okay, 
and um, the let's see what what happens then. The output. What was the previous output? The previous output was 22. That'll appear there. So 22 halved will be a value of 11, and I'll have 11 plus minus 8 plus 8. Oh, that's useful that the they're ca cancelling just to make my calculations easier. So uh, it's basically 11 plus 12, which is 23. So my next output will be 23, and let's just clear uh, all that and copy the result 23 and we'll move on to the next input and the next input was well there's lots of zeros coming afterwards isn't there lots of zeros remember that there's lots of zeros coming afterwards so the next input will be a zero and the um, previous value on this branch was a six so the six will now appear in that branch and on this branch here the previous value is an 8 and the 8 by minus 2 will be 16 0 by 2 will give me 0 um, and the previous output was 23 so that means here will be a value of 11.5 so, so my sum of these values here going into my adder I have three values one of them is 0 so that's 22 is plus 11 is 20 or, or 33.5 um, but is it the wrong there? Sorry, that must be minus 16. Um, so sorry. So that's minus 16 plus 6 is, is minus 10. Minus 10 plus 11.5 is, is, is 1.5. Okay, so my next output will actually be 1.5. Uh, and let's clear all that and record the result of 1.5. And um, let's move on to the next input. Um, I'm actually going to sure I put the zeros down here I've accidentally deleted them so there's an infinite number of zeros coming after this this is important um, now we ha as I say haven't explicitly defined it but there's always there's an infinite number of zeros coming after this discrete signal that we've explicitly defined um, so let's move on to the next input um, so that'll be this zero this zero has already been pushed into the system so let's move on the zero will appear there. Now, previous value on this branch was a zero, so that zero will now appear down here. And before that, there was a value of six. The six will be multiplied by minus two to give you minus twelve. It'll be zero there, zero there, and um, what was the previous output? One point five. That'll be halved, so I'll get zero point seven five on this branch. So the zero point seven five and the minus twelve will give me a minus eleven. 0.25 as my output. Okay, so that's minus 11 plus 2.25. 0 0.25 will be there. And just let's clear all that yet again. And we will record the result in yellow. 11.25. And we'll move on to the next zero. So we're really moving on to that zero there. Down here, we've done that zero, done that one. Now we're moving on to this one. This zero will be pushed onto my system. The zero will appear there, zero will appear there, and zero will appear here. So now our feed forward paths are not influencing the system anymore. My input is no longer influencing the system. All I've got coming into the adder is the previous output, which was 11.25, and will now become half of that which will be um, half of that sorry was that 11.25 or minus 11.25 I forget uh, I think it was, should have been a minus 11.25 wasn't it minus 11.25 so that would be minus uh, 5.625 and here will be minus 5.625 and then our new next output will be minus 5.625. Okay, so let's see. Well, the next let's clear all that and just record the result. Um, I think I have to. That should have been a minus, shouldn't it? I'm convinced that should have been minus 5.625. And let's move on anyway. Well, we know that the in input is just going to be values of zeros now. There's just constantly going to be zeros there. Actually, let's just undo that. And there's going to constantly be zeros here. I don't need to change that anymore. Um, and
and we'll just look at how the input is going to be altered or the output is going to be altered by the output only so the output has been fed back into the system and the previous output was minus 5.625 that's going to be halved again and that'll be something like well I'm just going to round it to minus 2.8 um, just for convenience so the next output is going to be minus 2.8 okay so let's just clear all that record the result yet again I'm going to minus 2.8 I'm hoping you can see that th from now on because there's no input effectively the output is going to be halved every time we'll just show that one more time explicitly um, so the previous output was minus 2.8 so that will appear here so the next output will be minus 1.4 which will mean that the next output will be minus 1.4 which is half the previous one so I'm just going to put in minus 1.4 and you should be able to see the next output is going to be minus uh, 0 0.7 then minus 0 0.35 minus um, half of that again will be uh, 0 0.1 um, 1.75 and, and so on okay so, uh, and really these numbers, this output will go on forever and it'll be getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it's been halved over uh, a period of time. Okay? Well, uh, sorry, over each sample. For every sample, it will be halved. Okay, um, so we've run through a fairly complicated example. Um, my belief is if you can handle this system, if you can understand what's going on, you really won't have to deal with anything any more complicated than that. And um, uh, in the next presentation I'll just run through the difference equation a view of this system and also a solution by that you can determine so you can determine the output by solving the difference equation for different values of m okay thanks for your attention